is Ethan Vu. I am 17. I go by they and he pronouns. I am a rising senior at Spring Lake Park High School, and I'm a youth fellow at Speaker Neapolis. Uh, I am Sage. I'm not giving my last name, sorry. I use they, them pronouns, and I am a boisterous gay. I don't know. I don't have a lot of like community credentials. I'm a Speak Minneapolis member, and I am affiliated with an organization called Fabric, where I live stream the proceedings to YouTube for the people that can't make it that day. And that's the extent of it. Yeah, in general, my community looks like it's a relative, I want to say it's relatively tight knit because I'm not good at socializing, but I have, I do have a very close circle of friends and I guess associates because apparently some adults think it's weird to be friends with me. Hello, my ninth grade math teacher. Goodbye, my math grade ninth teacher. But um, yeah, I have a pretty tight, snow, <laughs> tight community of friends. The fix it in post. But we're all very much, if not like a member of the LGBTQ, somewhere close in personality to what could be seen as like a stereotypical LGBTQ member. So we're all very, you know, gay and happy, both definitions. Yeah, I feel like for me, I'm, my community, what it looks like can be a bit isolating. Um, I very like... Ooh, topic <laughs> if we're this but um um i just have to say like it's a, it could feel isolating a bit because not only am i um mong um i am an online student so i don't have like a like continuing solid group of friends at school to like talk to about my I, like queer identity um i do however have my two sisters but they're way older than me so i can't connect them to like age level wise but um my community, it could like maybe use more. I guess I've like put effort to like reach out to other communities, such as like being part of Speak Minneapolis. That's how I met Sage, and that's how I met Ruby, and that's how I connected with Chip and all these other members who are also queer and just like to form yeah. friendships with them. I I'm, I'm sorry, go. There you go. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so pride. <laughs> What it means to me, right, just being, like, loving yourself, accepting your identity, your intersectionalities, and just, like, knowing that it's okay to be you, it's okay to love the same gender, it's okay for you to have a non-conforming, like, gender identity, and just all, like, all in all, self-acceptance, that's, I think that's what pride is for me. Yeah. My answer is also really similar to that. It's just being able to accept yourself and who you are. I have trouble with accepting how I look, but I'm working on it. Self-love is a process, and I'm going through the ringer on that process, but, you know, it happens. I guess I've known from a very young age, like elementary school, that I was not, you know, cis, heteronormative, conforming, whatever the term is for that. So I've been figuring out my gender identity and changing my name pretty much continually through my education up until last year where I legally changed my name, which was really great. For me, I mean, being included, I mean, dictionary definition of included in there, because, you know, inclusivity is a good thing, but I feel like just even like not disliking someone is a harm of including them. and. There's a lot of different ways that even, because everything you do as a person will send a message and everything you do as a person can be interpreted by someone. And even the act of like not communicating with someone is a message that you don't want to associate with them. And I think it's important that, you know, even just talking to someone can, you know, it's like scientifically proven, I'm sure somewhere that even just like talking to someone with small talk can make them feel better because humans are social beings yeah i guess like to add on with like disliking someone it's like rather than disliking probably just like like if you if you like dislike try to what's it tolerate i think that's the word yeah like 
we're all human beings at the end of the day. Like, and then as for like inclusion, for me, it's like not just including, but representing like the authenticity of it as well. Like, oh, just put in a gay character because they're gay and to represent them. Like, no, like actually, actually make them make them have a story of their own. Uh, like Trump, like not Trump, like like a story arc of their own, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, for me, it's important for representation to be there, not only because. Well, we live in a world full of diverse people, like across all identities, like national identity, racial identity, ethnic identity, and a gender identity and sexual orientation identity. It's like, how can we exclude one when they exist around the world? So then just representing them already shows that, well, sorry. It's like representing them shows that they do exist and that they're just, well, sorry, <laughs> that they exist just as any other human being. Yeah. And it can be hard to represent yourself sometimes if you're in a place where people, you know, there's, they might, you just not appreciate it or it might be outright dangerous for you to represent yourself. And having like a group or just even one other person that can support you or is even of that same like you know facet of a personality that you are like even just having one other person and not being isolated from anyone else in your own community representation matters because it gives us the confidence to express ourselves more fluently i don't know if that's the word but yeah yeah, and then to add on, I, I read this article about um, the in, in Florida, this teacher being in, investigated for including a book with a gay character in it. And then it's just ridiculous because, oh, well, all the other characters are straight, but no one's batting an eye. But just because this pers- this character is gay, everyone's going yeah. crazy. Florida is one of those whole other topics that we don't need to get into. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, I've definitely learned about like intersectionalities and and, um, honoring each one and that like for me I'm Hmong and queer and that itself is contradictory because Hmong is like taboo in the Hmong community Um, I'm sorry queer is taboo in the Hmong community and for me to exist it's like I'm the taboo but here I am loving myself accepting myself being here talking to you being friends with Sage (laughs) Yeah, I think, you know, similar to what Ethan said, the I think the most important thing you can learn from, like, just the LGBTQ and BIPOC communities as a whole is the concept of resilience and how resilient communities can be. Like, just history, it, American history is a mess, and, you know, historically it hasn't been great for, like, Native Americans, black people, you know, there was the boarding schools and ethnic cleansing and all the homophobia and Jim Crow laws and everything. And it's important to acknowledge, I think, that while there there are still these bad things happening, Florida, but while there are still bad things happening in the world, we are surviving. And it's going to get, it'll be bad, but it'll get better eventually if we keep making it through together if you are questioning about your identity like find a good solid support yeah um it doesn't always because i know like family members aren't like some might not accept it some do just like make sure you find your community your group um that you can like truly express yourself because that's an important thing in life is to be able to express yourself yeah because Figuring out who you are and your identity can be a very vulnerable period, and it's very easy for other people to influence what can happen in that time, either by supporting you or denying what you might be questioning your own identity for. So don't be afraid to question who you are if you don't feel like who you are is who you actually want to be or who you actually are, if that makes any sense at all. 
I'm I'm out of remotely intelligent things to say. 